I'm going to challenge the algorithm by starting with a bit of a recap. About six months ago, I decided to get back into more time. I started out by showing you some techniques to make awesome looking townhouses. Then I made some simple notice boards, easy to place practically anywhere on the tabletop. Next came some recycling duty, when I made these excellent guard towers out of Pringles cans. And finally, I did a town gallows, with some nice details speaking of a more positive history. All of these things and more have led up to me making a 4x4 foot Mordheim board, which I will show you today. <laughs> Hey folks, Leif here. Welcome to my channel called Devs and Dice. Today's video is very special for me. I'm going to show you how I made my 4x4 foot large Mordheim board. Being my first board, I had plenty of adversities, but I still got it done. And I have to say, I'm actually really proud of the result. I really hope that you like it as well. And if you do, please consider commenting down below, give the video a thumbs up, or subscribe to the channel. All of these things help the channel to reach out to new audiences. With that, let's start with the craft. Two 4x2 foot chipboard sheets with a thickness of 10 millimeters was the base of a board. I had already lined up and inserted some magnets into the boards. And to cover these up and stop them from popping out, I resorted to using construction adhesive. Now comes the first real problem. How would I cut these large XPS foam sheets? Well, I am sure that there are smarter ways, but for me, I decided to clamp down my proxon and the guide. This freed up my hands to guide the XPS and get a clean cut. Once the sheets were cut, I started out with some measuring on the boards. I had planned this for a while, so I knew I wanted a canal running down the middle. Essentially, my goal was to have at least three levels of height built into the board. The XPS sheets were attached to using some construction adhesive, and once the bottom layer was done, I glued on the other on top. I marked out a 6 inch way for the street that would cut through the terrain. So far, so good, right? Alright, so let's pause here for my first idiotic mistakes. I wanted to have a sidewalk on a main street, which meant that the majority of the board needed to be raised up. My plan was to use 5mm XPS sheets, but I couldn't find that anywhere, and I didn't want to wash the paper away from the foam core. I ended up trying these sheets of 2mm XPS, and I thought that if I glued two on top of each other, yeah, that would be fine. Well, I was in for a surprise. The real mistake, though, was the fact that I treated the two sheets as if they simply needed to adhere a bit to each other. I should have treated them like I wanted to fuse them together. What I am really saying is that I should have covered the entire surface with the construction adhesive, but alas, I didn't. So when I tried to punch in some nice cobblestones, what happened? Of course, the cobblestone came loose because I didn't have glue on that specific spot. A bit angry, but mostly disappointed with myself, I started cleaning off the thin sheets of XPS foam and start to construct a new plan of attack. There was one plan that instantly came to mind. The problem with this one was that it would send me to the gates of hell and back. Being determined as always, I decided to use that old brush to press in a cobblestone pattern on the main road. This was somewhat brain melting labor, but at least I was making progress. Once I had the road squared away, I started out by laying some 5mm bricks on the sides to signify a sidewalk. Also, off camera, I bricked up the walls using the same size bricks. At this point, I started making some mock-up structures for the stairs that were going to go from the top plateau onto some walkways adjacent to the canal. The main structure was made fast using some hot glue for adhesion. Once I had the structure done, I took some measurements to ensure that I was keeping to my plan and then I began clapping adding it with some more of those 5mm thick bricks. All in all, I made four of these. Here is where my personal hell began. I started cutting those 5x5x10mm bricks in half, and I needed a lot of them. Once I had a bunch of them cut, I started the tedious, seemingly endless job of gluing them into place, one by one, using white glue. At some point I realized that it would be beneficial for me to hot glue in those stairs as well. 
I focused on one board at this point almost entirely. Worth mentioning that I cut out some holes for manholes here and there. Once the final bricks were placed, my shoulder was screaming with pain and I honestly was fearing that I couldn't complete the second one. At this point I was talking to some of my friends while playing Rocket League and Sonny asked why I couldn't just glue them onto something thin and small. The solution was as simple as it was brilliant. I decided to start gluing down the half bricks onto some printer paper. Once the sheet of XPS bricks had dried, I simply glued them down onto the foam using plenty of white glue. As for the seams, I glued individual bricks to bridge that gap, but it was a lot easier on my shoulder and I think it actually went faster. At this point I was on a high and the relatively small side paths next to the canal felt easy as heck to brick up. As mentioned, I wanted some manholes and I bought and printed a whole bunch of these. Using them as reference, I marked out where I wanted them and started to remove some material. Once I broke through to the clean XPS foam, I used my foam cutting wand to burn a more round and clean hole. And of course, I did plenty of dry fitting, making sure that the manholes fit perfectly. I knew I wanted some walls at the top of a plaza. I opted to use some 1mm plastic card as a structure to glue in some of those 5mm bricks. Similar to as before, I used hot glue on the bottom row and then switched to white glue for all other rows. I left a lip of one brick height to give me some more leverage as I glued them onto the board. As always, here's a good place to be creative and create some holds and other storytelling elements onto your terrain. I knew I wanted to make some supports for these walls and I pondered a few ideas back and forth but eventually went with this simple design. I cut a whole bunch of wider bricks, made a grout line on one side and then stacked them in an alternate pattern. Simple. I'm pretty sure that the idea came from me watching Black Magic Craft's 13th video way back when it came out. So thanks Jeremy. Once the walls were in place I added a capstone piece to all of the walls and supports. Now on to painting. The first thing I did was to take some neat Mod Podge and brush it onto the wood. This would protect the wood from any unwanted moisture, causing it to swell or warp. While that was drying, I covered the rest of the board with a mix of Mod Podge and some black paint. I opted to prime the boards using some cheap black acrylic hobby paint and a brush. I honestly never thought I would use that large Citadel terrain brush, but <laughs> go figure. You might notice that the second table is gone at this point and replaced with a fold-up table with a lazy Susan underneath. Well, that was needed to start out with the Zenithal. The next step in my painting process is to cover everything with some burnt umber ink. This undercoating will help it look much more aged and war-torn. Back to brushes with a soft makeup brush and a deluxe palette. The first color I'm coming in with is a dark gray, which I am overbrushing onto all of the bricks and stones. The next color is light grey which I am dry brushing on while keeping the light direction in mind. At this point I was venturing into unknown territory so I decided to matte varnish the entire board. Wall filler or spackle. I knew I wanted to make the walls feel vastly different from the cobblestone even though they were both built from identical foam bricks. For the wall I opted to smear on some of that spackle which I controlled using plenty of water on a brush and then some tissues to soak up the excess. So switching focus to the cobblestone, I wanted the feeling of dirt pressed between each individual stone and I decided to go with coconut fiber, which I ground up using my coffee grinder. Now even though I love the look of the coconut fiber, it did have some built-in problems which I will get to soon. I started out by pouring some of the ground up coconut fiber on the board and spread it around with a soft dry brush. Now I knew that once moisture would hit the coconut fiber it would swell up so I opted to use some wet water which is a recipe I got from Luke Towen. Once the coconut fiber stopped swelling I used a wide soft brush to brush off the excess from the board into a separate container. After I was happy with how the coconut fiber looked, I sprayed the area with my homemade scenic sealant which is based on Luke Towen's recipe. And honestly, 
I just drenched every piece of coconut fiber on the board. Now onto the side facing the canal. I thought long and hard about doing a resin pour, but it's expensive as heck and it also would introduce a whole bunch of negative space, which I'm not a big fan of. As you might have noticed with my Mordheim builds, I want buildings to have an interior, as many places as possible that support gameplay, and no unopenable doors or such. Being a professional game designer, I've had enough of those in my career. It won't happen on my table. I shifted focus onto the manholes and other bits I had printed. I primed these in black using my airbrush. After that, I sprayed some gunmetal grey on all of the parts. Lead Belcher, Typhus Corrosion and Ryza Rust were my weapons of choice. I started by adding a whole bunch of Typhus Corrosion, then stippling on some Ryza Rust, and then I diluted some of that paint to create an orange wash which I added to the objects. Once dried, I picked out some metallic details with the Lead Belcher paint. Gluing these in was done easily using some super glue and at this point I could really start seeing it all coming together. Once the super glue was dry I started out with some wash and grime and my recipe for this is to shoot strong tone through the airbrush. I focus on where the moisture might have gathered, where ground meets walls, corners and of course where bodies of water might have been in the past, like this canal. I mixed the tones a bit with some military shader as well, just to get some slight hints that there might be some fungus growing here and there. I wanted to get some water from those sewer outlets. For this I used some plastic from some blister packs and cut them into a S kind of shape. I mixed in a few drops of some desaturated green ink into the resin and gave it a good stir. I start out by placing the plastic bit and then I use a bit of that resin to adhere the plastic to the sewer outlet. This was actually quite easy but I would recommend caution always when working with resin. Once the base shape was in place, I poured on some more resin and cured it all with a UV torch. Ah, looking properly disgusting. As a final touch, I added some puddles here and there to visually break up the bottom of the canal. At this point, I wanted to add some gloss varnish anywhere where moisture might have gathered. This really gave the board a nice contrast in its highlights. As a finishing touch on the water and puddles, I came in with some Vallejo water texture paste to give it a bit more light. I'm gonna add a whole bunch of posters, graffiti and grime in my Mordheim board. Some of these posters actually feature my dear patrons as wanted individuals. Speaking of my patrons, I want to thank you so much for the support and patience. A special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. Andreas Wienberg, Bo Algren, Erik Ortman, Lawrence Davis, Madners, Magnus Solberg, Battle Corgi V7, 4VXP, Leander, Marc Antoine Laramie, me and Niklas Swedenlind. Again, thank you so much for your support. As some of you might know, the city of Mordheim has fish in its standards, so I thought some bronze fish statues might be a nice set of decoration on the board. I found some on Thingiverse, which I printed out together with some iron ladders that I modeled myself. The paint scheme for the ladders followed the same as for the manholes, while the fish were painted up with some bronze and then coated with some nihilac oxide. Even here it's good to consider that even oxidized bronze can color its environment a bit and run down. I curated a small collection of desaturated tufts which I added on the board where vegetation might have grown. One important and missing aspect of this board was the bridge. I knew I wanted a bridge with a slight curve in it and that it should support miniatures. I opted to create a simple template in Illustrator and cut it out on some foam core. Then I glued in the bottom of it using some thin XPS foam I had shaped into a curve. As per usual, the bottom row of the bricks was attached using hot glue, but once that was in place, I switched over to normal tacky glue. The cobblestone pattern was done on a thin sheet of XPS foam, which I glued in using some hot glue. Once done, I painted the bridge in the same way as the bricks. After laying over 50,000 bricks, spending countless hours of work, changing my hobby space to accommodate the board, it is at last time to see what the final result looks like with some of my terrain on the board.
I cannot begin to tell you how proud and excited I am of this. I have always wanted to build a board but never had the courage or skill or means to do so. But finally it's here and it looks amazing. I'll be honest, I've spent hours just staring at it with a goofy smile slapped on my face. I cannot believe that I actually did it. Now I posted some pics to my D&D Mordheim group and asked if anyone wanted to play around. My friend Eric answered immediately with a date and time, so it was on. It was time to see if this board elevated Mordheim where I wanted it to be. Now, I want to be clear, Sweden sucks when it comes to air conditioning in residential houses. It was a super hot day and we had about 6 fans going around at full speed. The temperature was around 28 degrees celsius, but we still played a full game of Mordheim. I had a super great time and I think that Eric had a good time as well, but I really didn't want to ask him as we were in the middle of a game because this was serious. His Chaos Dwarves were fighting against my Reichlanders and I could see his units using elevated positions and such which they had never done before. So for me I just felt like this battle felt like it happened on several levels and it felt much more dynamic. But the question was. What did Eric think of the board and terrain? It was great, because the, uh, compared to the club we usually play at, uh, the cover was more uh, sort of on-off. Uh, there were no weird measurements and a lot more ladders and uh, ways to access buildings and stuff. It's really a huge uh, upgrade, as well as the, just the visuals, everything just meshed together. Right, that sounds good, but Eric, who won? I liked it. Good match, man. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to watch another video, then YouTube recommends these. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.